Hey guys, Matt Guzman here, back with a video, and today is going to be about how to participate, volunteer for, scouting for food. So this video is obviously a little different, because it's not any rank requirement, and it's not any merit badge, it's just good old fashioned discussion and presentation on what this concept is, because honestly, I didn't know what it was until last year, so let's get right into it. So just some background information. Scouting for food is the nation's largest single day food drive. It helps those in need in all communities, and helps improve scouting programs. It influenced scout slogan to do a good turn daily into scouts who participate. It also is good method for beginner scouts to earn volunteer hours and help the community. Some more background information. Uh, in 1985, Scouting for Food actually began as a scout service project, but it was adopted as a national event in 1988. It helps feed the hungry in communities and it's meant to teach the value of helping others. Now, just a few things. Scouting for food is a national thing for America, and those are just like the broad concept of it, but I'm kind of gonna be focusing towards my district, which is the Central Florida Council. Now, it, it's gonna be similar, it's just not exactly the same, but everything, all the steps and everything are still gonna be the same. It occurs on the first Saturday of November, not November the 1st, but the first Saturday. In this case, that's today, Saturday, November 2nd, but it varies on the day. And Boy Scouts leave flyers and or plastic bags around neighborhoods, although I believe two years ago they stopped the plastic bags, I guess maybe because of an environmental hazard or something, so now boys just have flyers. The flyers are usually red, and they look like this, and they signify that it's a scouting for food flyer, and it says that Central Florida, or wherever your district is, are going to be coming to that neighborhood, and it informs the recipient about the pickup time, and the pickup date, and what they're supposed to be donating, which is usually the non-perishable foods, like cans. Flyers usually are provided by a scouting for food chairman, and... And before you do this, you should probably find out what your existing council program is. Like I said, it still should be similar, but you should just make sure just to verify. And if you don't have a Scouting for Food chairman, all you have to do is get your Scoutmaster to ask for it by the district, who will most likely supply you with the flyers. Now, well, in order to get started, here's how, how programs usually work. Neighborhoods are mapped, and bags are distributed or flyers are distributed now, to homes with instructions and details on scouting for food. And then, a week later, the full bags are collected and bags are delivered to a food bank. By bags, it's usually the person who donated provided it. And if not, you don't need to put it in a bag, just put it somewhere where it can be like picked up and dropped off somewhere. Also, how to plan in advance. First, you need to contact the food bank for verification to make sure they know you're dropping food off there and verify the date on which you're doing scouting for food. Again, it's the first Saturday, so make sure everyone in your troop knows the date. Have a head count of all available scouts, and map out the neighborhoods and areas where scouts will go. And mapping it out, as you can see here, is a really big factor, because if you don't know where you're going to be going, then that's kind of an issue, because then you don't know where the event's going to take place. And especially when you're trying to delegate different groups to the different areas, it gets extremely hard if you don't know where you're going to go. So make sure you have uh, a mapped out area, and usually they have a count of how many units are in that area. So like in the bottom left here, you can see we have the units, uh, which is households essentially. But you have a count of how many units you have, because then that correlates with how many flyers you need. So as long as you have everything planned for, it makes everything a lot easier. A couple other things, set up a meeting place for before and after the event. If your troop just goes off into the dis different neighborhoods, there's, there's not really much communication going around, and what happens if someone gets done early? There's going to be a lot of questions, so make sure you set up a meeting place, maybe a parking lot or something for before and after the events, and then get an estimation for the amount of flyers that you have, and assign groups to certain areas. Establish a pickup date, which is the week after, so the second Saturday of November, and make sure everyone knows what those dates are. And one last thing, the customary start time is 9 a.m. for both weeks. Now, if you're still a little confused, the first week of the Saturday of November is when you're dropping off the flyers, and then the week after that, which is the second Saturday of November, is when you're picking up the actual food. So the custom start time for both of those events is 9 a.m. Now, 
couple things to do during the event. Remind parents and scouts a day before, usually through an email or some kind of uh, contact, and then meet up around 8.45 a.m. at the meeting place to give a final instruction and recap of what all the scouts should be doing. Hang flyers on the front door or the doorknob. You don't want to knock on the door, just leave it there. If a resident happens to greet you, just explain the program, explain what you're doing and what the whole thing with scouting for food is. Also, get as much households as possible. Usually flyers run out before you can reach all the households, so that's why you need to have a count for how many flyers you have. And based on the map that I had before, we actually counted how many units were in each neighborhood. So it's good that you have a good amount of households and a good amount of flyers. Also, distributing lasts longer than pickup because you're going to each individual door and placing the flyer either on the door handle or somewhere where they can see it. Delegate bigger groups for distribution. Stay together and work in a timely manner. During event part two, and this refers to the week after when you're actually picking up the food, don't spend too much time because all you're doing is scanning the area to see if any bags are visible. Only pick up visible bags and items that people have left at the front. It's clear to tell if it's for you, even if it doesn't have the thing stapled on, which it probably won't. But it's clear to tell if it's for scouting for food and if it isn't. So just make sure you're picking up the visible items. The process tends to be quicker, so make sure everything is collected and that you have all the food. Uh, they don't need to be in bags because you don't supply the bag, but if they are in bags, just carry the bags over. And if they aren't in bags, get a couple scouts to help you. Remember that this is going to be quicker than when you were putting out the flyers, but I prefer, it'd probably be preferable if you'd bring like a cart with you or something that you can put the items in. That's just what I did and it proved to be very helpful. But in this step, all you're doing is picking up the items that people have left on the front. Now, here's a couple tips after the event. Only collect visible bags, as I said before. This is a big one because a lot of people think that you have to knock on each door and ask if they have food. No, it's the point is it's a donation thing, so if there are bags there, then you take those bags. And it doesn't, like I said before, they don't have the bag system anymore, so if you see visible cans or like some kind of perishable food, then you take it. Have all groups meet up to take into account everything accomplished. Um, talk, talking about like your progress, maybe how many pounds of food you collected, how much food you collected. And make sure the troop successfully takes the food to the designated drop-off location, which is usually a food bank of some kind, or maybe a, a special place in the district. Now, let's just talk about my experience. So last year when I did scouting for food, the Central Florida Council had a goal of 500,000 pounds of food to be collected. So if you do the math, that's about 35 items per scout. So that means 10 scouts would equal 350 pounds for your troop. However, my troop only had six scouts for the collection, and overall collected 667 pounds of food. So we had almost half the amount of scouts, but we also collected almost double the amount of food. So I thought that was really cool for my troop. Just a few more things. The distribution for each group took three hours, which meant as we were passing out flyers to all the different units in the neighborhoods, that took about three hours to do. And collection, when we were collecting the food, took about two hours. So like I said before, the distribution process tends to be longer because you're doing on every single door. The collection, you're just scanning to see if there's visible food. And 2018, which is the one I did last year, the Central Florida Council District collected, in total, well over 600,000 pounds of food, which is more than the 500,000 pound goal, which I thought was really cool. Thank you for watching my video on scouting for food and how it works. If you did enjoy, please like the video. Turn on notifications on my channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!